Okay, I know I'm a couple months behind on this, but this spring, the Adobe CC 2017 update got rid of the titles function and replaced it with the essential graphics view. This is going to be a little bit of a walkthrough on that view. Okay, so let's get into Premiere Pro and take a look at the new essential graphics panel. To find the graphics, you're going to go to Windows and Essential Graphics if you don't have it already. When you click on that, it'll pull up the Essential Graphics. By default, it'll actually be a large window here, but I've moved mine into the little panel on the left here. So let's start with the views. By default, it's going to pull you into this larger Essential Graphics view. You can also select your libraries if you have any libraries created. I don't. It defaults a few in here, the caption and subtitles. This one's kind of nice. I've used this a few times. And um, let's just kind of show you what it looks like. So I've got this little clip video from uh, one of our shows. And I want to add the little uh, name titles, for example, that come out on the bottom. Normally, I would have gone to titles, add new title, and had a little pop-out title here. So you can use one of the default ones. Um, so let's go essential graphics back to the top level. That's just the little arrow here. And I want a basic lower thirds. What you do is you drag and drop it onto the timeline above wherever your video is. And notice now that we have the your name here coming in. This is really what threw me off is you would think that you could just select it and you see the your name here on the upper left and you would just click in it to type, but you actually can't do that. What you have to do is you've got to hit the type tool down here, selecting that, and notice now what happens is the little red box opens up around it. You can then click in it and change it. So in this case, we'll do like a Milo Denison. And let's say on the lower portion here, we'll do the no budget Twitter feed or something like that. There we go. And so that's how you get to that now versus the old titles view. You can also change things like um, your font just by selecting the fonts down here in the text field, the views. You can center it. You can adjust the size here. This is where you would do your kerning and all that fun stuff. Um, you also have some stroke, a stroke and a drop shadow. So let's get rid of the stroke and notice now I've got a drop shadow over here on the right. That's a terrible font for this. Uh, let's just switch back to, oops. Switch that back to Arial. Okay, so notice now I've got a font, uh, the drop shadow back behind it. And you can adjust the drop shadow a little bit if you need to. Um, down below here, so notice I can adjust the opacity of it, the angles, and all of that kind of fun stuff. You want to change the color of something, just click within the box, and it's going to pull up the color pickle window. You can also edit this within the effects control window, so notice I've got it in the essential graphics here on the left, but in the effects control window as well, you can edit a lot of this information as well as doing, uh, you know, scaling in, growing, that, all that kind of stuff. Next thing that you can do is let's say you don't want to use one of the pre-populated ones that they have here and you want to create one of your own. That's no problem at all. You click on your video that you want to add it to and then just select the type tool and then go up to the window and then start typing. It's going to default to what you were previously using here. So let's get rid of that drop shadow. Let's get rid of all of this other crap. Let's bring the size back large again. Oops. There we go. And notice now what it did is it just created a new layer above that. Let's say I want to do one for me and now I want to do one for uh, Claire over here. I then have to click on it, type, and notice what it's going to do is it's going to create another one. So I would either need to throw it on a layer above that so that both of ours show at the same time. 
or they would need to be typed into the same one. The reason why you would do them on a different one is let's say I want a motion, I want to put some type of a motion on it. So with mine, let's say I want it to scroll in from the left. So I'm starting off screen and I want it to scroll in quickly. And with hers, we'll start it off. Got to select it. Start it off up here. And I want it to scroll down instead of from above. And how and so, it kind of resonates you notice now, amongst us as a populace that watches a movie. Pop in so for example, um, you can't do them on the same layer. They would have to be on a separate layer now. Okay, so let's see. That's editing the text, fills and shadows, creating a new one from scratch. Um, to save a graphics template, so let's say I've got this one of me. I've changed the fill color to something I like, like a red. I've put a, um, right up here on the left, you see you've got a new layer option. You can um, add like ellipses and rectangles and even stuff that you have in file already. What I'm going to do here is create a box. I'm going to change it to the you know, shade of the no budget yellow. And what I did here on the upper left is I just drag and dropped that shape layer underneath my name layer so that gets it into the back. And this is a terrible looking graphic. But let's say now I want that to and how it Always kind of resonates one of amongst us as a populace that where they the scroll movie. in. So for example, um, voila. And now I want to save it so that that way I don't have to recreate it every time. So what you want to do is right click and then select export as motion graphic or sorry, export as motion graphic template. I'm just going to name this temp test. It gives you options of your essential graphics panel, a local drive, and this is actually one nice thing is you can also save it to your um, a place in your Adobe uh, Creative Cloud Drive so that, that way you can potentially share it. So let's say we have multiple people editing the show. I want to create a graphic that we can all use. I can share it to them. So now when I'm in my Essential Graphics Browse, it's going to have that new one that I just created here, Test. So for example, I've done one in the past that now scrolls in and now we can uh, I that a lot of save that and share it amongst the team. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I know it was a little frustrating for me when I first saw it, but now that I've gotten used to it, I'm okay with it.